It's Monday, April 10th, 2017. This is The Ideation Project, Season 1, Track 1. What does it mean to truly feel like you belong somewhere? Or, what if you don't belong anywhere? No place to receive a hand. What does it mean to feel like you have no homeland? What if we're becoming an entire world of exiles? It's counterintuitive. This is the era of globalization, aspirational migration, cross-pollination of human beings from all sides of a planet, multinational, multiracial, and totally plugged in. But if we belong everywhere, we're also just a step away from belonging nowhere. No Warians, devoid of roots to spare. It's a fine line when we've been transplanted and transformed. It can then be a precarious gateway to unwelcome via uninformed. What if we are becoming an entire world of exiles? This is not really a natural evolution. It can be bred with intent, discontent, and a strong dose of scapegoating and xenophobia. It's partly about assigning singular identities to groups of people based on race or ethnicity, religion, or nationality, and targeting them as the problem. It's a message that says, old stock citizens beware. It's about underscoring a scare. It manifests overtly in the banning of refugees, suspending immigration and deportation, but it's also about sowing division within the borders of a nation. It's painting people as the other and sending them into exile within a community. It may not always be geographic segregation, but it can cause as much harm. And if it can happen to your neighbor down the street, it can happen to you. Every single one of us has a lineage that came from somewhere, and we can be forced back there too. But to where? Where is this territory that has dominion over who we truly are? Beyond executive orders, a climate of fear-mongering itself is fundamentally damaging. The perception that some are seen as lesser or dangerous based on their color, religion, or language. How does this happen exactly? Do all lives still matter? Countries like the United States, the UK, or Canada were meant to exemplify the dream of inclusion. What happens when we learn that that is an illusion? Or at least that there are forces in power that would prefer to build walls, and you may ultimately be that other when the veil of patriotism calls. And can anyone really get on a high horse about how their country is somehow immune? There's no place in the world now devoid of some folks singing this tune. A backlash to global unity means that we all risk exile. And this is not to trivialize or betray those who face a direct implication, those mercilessly forced to resettle outside or even inside their promised nation. But it's also about something more widespread and cultural. Human beings in a new world that promises global connection feeling the opposite like they're in a place of internal separation. It's not always about one group or one political ideology. Some feel exiled by cultural change or technological progress. It's still a planet where populations are jockeying for real estate, socially, economically, geographically, trying to take places. Brexit or don't, it breaks down by the races. But is there any more painful a divide than stripping global citizens of their pride? The first day of spring marked Noruz, the Persian New Year. For those of us of Iranian descent, we know that as a beautiful occasion, a non-religious celebration of life, of light. It has no borders. But coming from Iran today can put you on a blacklist fed mostly by hype. It can strip you of rights based on a fictional archetype. Integration can be messy, but dire warnings about immigration are undue. Does compassion descend into maybes if it's somebody else's babies? Hey, there are immigrants who live in an exilic mindset, but that notion of the perfect old land to return to is a mirage, steeped in nostalgia and aspiration. It's the stuff of imagination. When there is no ideal homeland to return to and you're told you're not welcome where you are, where does that leave you? 
For first or second generation immigrants, it's natural to identify with others being targeted or caught behind walls. We realize that this could easily be us. But then, in a globalized world where migration is now fluid, who is beyond reproach? Who is an authentic American or Canadian or Britain with a moral claim to the land? Who beyond First Nations? And when did proprietary proclamations ever help foster human relations? Look, we can stand on our porch with a shotgun and keep others out, but what happens on the other side of the picket fence? Boundaries don't stand the test of time. The path of globalization cannot be halted. So we have a choice. Throw up walls and try to shut each other out, or invite the world in and attempt to mend the seeds of doubt. Maybe it is the very lack of belonging that leads to a yearning for destruction. Like, if you don't want me, I don't want you, and I'll try to take you down. But this is about more than one state, one country, or one government town. We are in danger of becoming a world of exiles. And what does it mean to be building a planet of residence with no home? Maybe this has to be about the world rising to say we all belong somewhere. Through all of our imperfections and all of our fear, we belong here.